Hello everybody. We're back looking at this little combine and trying to figure out how to fix the guy's hands. You know, earlier when we moved his hands, we discovered one of his hands was at the base of the steering wheel. It was improperly placed. So we were able to successfully move his hand up to the knob on the steering wheel. Now it tracks properly. And the other hand, we attempted to put here on this lever, if you will, this speed lever, and appears there's several functions on it. We set the player's right hand here, but in game, kind of, kind of as we saw, it was ineffective. And I've been wondering if it's because the the handle or whatever this is called this gear lever is too far away from the hand the hand kind of sits over here to the side and it doesn't reach forward like we would hope it's you know it's a little different for the left hand and I wonder if some of this is just in the coating where one arm is more uh, in tune or I don't know how to say it Suffice it to say, the left hand easily comes up here to the steering wheel and the right hand were unable to budge from kind of sitting down here on the side. Now I've looked at some other mods and one of those, I can't remember if I've mentioned it, I looked at a skid steer by another modder called Zentro. He made the model and everything, I believe, and did some coding. And I noticed even on his, the right hand was kept stationary. His particular mod, being a skid steer, had two gears, one on the right and one on the left, you know, and that's what they would have in real life to steer the thing and run various functions. Well, even he had it set up so that only the left hand did any movement. And the right hand just stayed stationary on the right lever. So that would be a thought here too, is to put this within reach of the hand, wherever that is, and then make it stationary so that only the left hand is doing some moving. And it could just be that's how the game is set up for left hand only for whatever reason. I can't say I've tried to use the right hand to turn the steering wheel on its own. I did try it once. I can't remember if I put this in the video where I had both the left hand and the right hand on the wheel. And it seemed to work fine. The left hand would turn it like normal and the right hand would kind of turn along with it. So maybe there is something to it. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe this lever is simply too low and it's out of reach. Don't know. Doesn't matter. And... Really, um, you know, I've checked a little bit in this particular machine to see if the location of this lever is even in the right spot. And actually, I'll just do that again here real quick so, so you can see it, how we can maybe research some of this. Uh, if we look over here, we can look up the machine, New Holland 35 yeah, there we go. That's our search term, cab interior. And I looked up images and, well, you know what? I think the other one, I didn't use a word cab. I just had interior. Yeah, here's one in game, incidentally. Uh, here's from a later version of the game had a version of this, but it doesn't show the inside. But here's this picture here, which I thought was kind of helpful. You, know, you look at it, sure enough, we have the row or the console over here, if you will, with all the gauges and whatnot on, on the side of the player. But then the gear shift lever, and I can't really turn in here and see, you know, what all it is. It looks a little bit longer than the one we have in our model, but similarly structured, and it has a curved tube down there. And sure enough, you know, it kind of fits into the corner of the cab. Now, I don't know that I'm talented enough. I, I don't know how to use a, a blender or 3D 
modeling software to create a different gear you know right now we have this orange part you know if we go back to our model we have the orange part up here but if you look at it you will notice that it's only barely sticking in here and you know, let's see just right into this part here so if we moved this you know, if I just do the seed it, it terminates right there so it's really only the plastic part that we have so one thought I had was finding a tube and somehow linking it up in there and putting it in there and extending it out that would be a thought get it up kind of on a similar level to the steering wheel because that is kind of how it appears oh, lost my browser here we go <clears throat> if we look at this in here it does stick up a little ways and it's much closer to the reach of the operator as maybe they would rest their arm on the on the armrest of the chair but what this does tell us is this little uh, thing that this gearbox goes into does go to the corner of the cab so one thought I'd had at one point was trying to move this whole support here and this is actually somewhat accurate so we have a couple choices here. I, I think from what I've, I've shared in my videos, I personally don't do a lot of in-cab playing a farming simulator. I do a little bit from time to time, but the, the joy I get from the game is outside of the cab mostly. I know some players play on the inside, but I do know that occasionally, you know, you'll be outside of the cab and you will see the player in here aka you interacting with gears you know or the steering wheel or whatnot so so I don't know I guess it is uh, worthy of trying to fix so the thought I had was to move the location of this to back here a little bit but I think what we find when we try to move it if I can get down here is it's got this angle piece coming up here and it's designed obviously to sit right here in the corner so uh, when you would attempt to move this you have this piece it's kind of sticking up in the air so if I move it closer to the seat I mean that just looks a little strange that it would have kind of this piece sticking there so I was thinking that if I move it I can figure out a way to move it closer to the player over here maybe we can get the hand on it maybe I can even jack it up a little bit a little bit further just so it's visually more appealing like if I move it up yeah there's there's some room there to get this up to where the hand can grab it but I, I just think it looks strange. You know, this was intended to be braced into the corner. If I do it, I'd like to get rid of the top. So really the only way to do that is to take it into 3D software because we don't have the pieces here. So I was going to use this video to kind of take a stab at that. And so uh, since it's its own dif uh, distinct piece, the first thing we would need to do is to export this particular piece with whatever files it has and we want to do it in a wave, op wave object format so we can uh, open it up in blender and actually I did this a little bit ago so it's already here we'll just overwrite it we'll replace it so you can see it happen so now that we've done that we've taken this we've turned it into a 3d object for editing and so I think what I'm going to do at this point is start up Blender and this is an older version of Blender I know there's people with vastly more experience I'm sorry this is old but I'm using the old one because it's an old game and I don't know if it's better adapted I've, I've done a few other things using this version and it's worked out okay so I think what I'll do is the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the starting square this is kind of the blender environment blender is really an intimidating program just to open up so that's part of the reason why I haven't uh, learned it all yet I'm trying to get bits and pieces but for the moment let's import 
our shape. So it's a uh, wave front object shape. And now we, we need to go find it here. So I think we put it in the shared folder of our combine. There it is, the console object. So we're going to import it. And one of the things, oops, actually, what did I just do? I think I just bleeped it out. Oh, goodness. I don't know how to redo. I actually did, accidentally did an undo. So I'm going to have to re-import that, it appears. No problem. There it is. But something else I would like to do while I'm in here doing this. You see how this piece is sticking way up here? It sure is helpful when you're on the model. You may not have noticed it because we were able to move it a little bit. But this arrow thingy, whatever that's called, is miles away from the actual piece. And it sure is helpful when you're placing a piece to have this arrow thingy. Again, I'm not sure what it's called to have it centered right on the object itself so you know where you're moving it and if you gotta go clear out to Timbuktu to try to move it around you don't always know how it's gonna be moving where the actual object is so maybe that's one part we could try to fix right away and if you give me just a second here I gotta open my my cheat sheet here to re-figure out how to do that. There's like a series of steps to go to to move the center or to move this object uh, to the center. So I'm going to go back through that. So first we select the object in object mode. Then we switch to edit mode which grabs it. Um, switch to face select mode so we're going to go control tab and get face and then we're going to move the 3d cursor to the center of the face so we'll go shift s and go uh, cursor to selection i believe so cursor to selected then we're going to switch to and see how that moved it off the center here. So now it's up here. But I think we also, when we save this, we want to move it clear to orientation 0, 0, 0, just to get it in the center. Makes it a lot easier when we're working with So when we load this object up, it doesn't just appear in some random place, but that it appears right in the center of you know what we're doing. So we're going to switch back to object mode. And then we're going to move the origin of the object to the cursor. So Shift, Control, Alt, C. And we're going to select origin to 3D cursor. And then we're going to move the cursor to the origin. So we're going to go Shift, S. And we're going to say cursor to center. So that moves that back there. Then we're going to move the object to the cursor. That's Shift S and Selection to Cursor. Remember, we have this object selected, so it's going to move it. Boom, just like that. Then we're going to set the origin back to the geometry. So Shift, Control, Alt, C. And we'll select Origin to Geometry. All that to put this piece right here. So now that we kind of have, and we could choose some other uh, point if we, if we wanted to. But now that we have this here, we'll look at the real reason we basically you know, wanted to come in here, which is namely to chop this off right up here. And just before this, I kind of watched a tutorial. You know, I'm, I'm kind of talking about this as if I know, and I don't. You know, I had to watch a video on this. I'll try to link that up so someone else can see it if you want uh, in the description when I'm done. You know, I always, I, I have bookmarked several things. You know, like what I just did a little bit ago. I have a cheat sheet up on my other screen that tells me how to move this, you know, to the, to the origin just to make it a little easy, easier to, to work with. So here's our 
shifter uh, selection, if you will, that we're going to be putting in. We want to cut the top off, so we want to bisect this. So for that, I'll also share another link that explains kind of how to do this. But to do this, we need to go back to um, edit mode. And now that we're here, you can see all the, the faces of everything. And, you know, some of these faces terminate down here. We can get various pieces, if you will. But really what we need to do is take out our buzzsaw and whack it right through here. So we need uh, what's called a bisect tool. And I don't know how this is going to turn out. So actually, you know what? Let me just, you know, I'm not sure. Let me see if I can get back out of it. Yeah, let me turn to a different angle. I wonder if this would be a little better. Let me try that again. So you take this after clicking on that and try to bisect it here. Yeah. So see how that sawed through there. Now we're still in edit mode, so to separate these parts, keep the cutting selected and it says press V to rip. All right, pressing V. So I think what that did is it sawed it in half. So now we have a piece here and a piece here. Now you can select a half or the other with the L key. So you can go there. Actually, I think, yeah, what we'll do is... I'm just selecting all the faces that are involved here. And I think that's all of them. And what I'm going to do is just hit delete. And we're going to delete the faces. And it looks like there's a few more. Maybe it isn't uh, letting me get all of them. Or it had a double. There. So that took care of the top of it. Now, what we have is a gaping hole. So to, to get rid of that, let me see if it's edge. I want to come in here and I clicked on this, hopefully to select an edge. I want to grab um, this edge, this edge. See if I can get all of these faces. I think I have all of them. Well, maybe there's one more little one in here. There's another little one there. And then I'm going to hit F, and I think that'll fill it in. So, you know, as I look at this, and like I say, I really, I really don't know what I'm doing. This is probably going to be good enough for for my purposes but you know I almost wonder if this little lip here if I go back to selecting faces wherever that was here probably if I delete that out um, I don't know if I can delete that. That kind of almost gets, maybe I'll delete this back out and redo it. It gets kind of hard to see. Does that kind of look like, maybe to really be done right, it would need to be resawed. I think I got rid of an extra piece in there. So I'm gonna have to re face this let me just select these again grab them along here we'll give it a new face just to close the top in oh yeah I'm still seeing some of that in there but you know I don't know that we'll see it in game so anybody that is a professionally using Blender, I I apologize. This is abysmal for any purposes there. But 
I think we've accomplished the goal in terms of what we wanted to do, which was namely to cut the top off, because then what I'm going to do is move this console, and all we'll see is just kind of the gear shift sticking out of it here. Uh, when we try to put it back in the combine. Now, something I want to see is just what happens to our colors and that kind of thing. Like if I look at a rendered version of this, um, I just want to make sure it's looking nice. And I don't know if it has, you know, if I go back to the model, you know, does it even have a diffuse texture? Well, yeah, it appears it does. So maybe what I need to do is make sure those, you know, I may just try to export this as is. I haven't done any texture work on it, but I'm kind of curious to see what happens to it when I export it to an i3D. We have to export it to an i3D or an FBX. I'll try i3D first because that's the giant's editor. You know, the editor can't open an, a wavefront object, so we're going to put it back to i3D file here. And I'm just going to put it right in the same place where the, let me see your shared. Did I put it? Yes, I did. So I'm going to call this console dot i3. I think I have a dot in there. Oh, no, I don't. I'm going to put a dot console i3d. We'll look at this. This is what it's exporting. I think this should be okay. I think it's only a black color that it has on it. So we're not talking too fancy. So, whoops, now that it's over in uh, shared, we should have, there it is, console i3d. Let's just open that with uh, our text editor real quick. I kind of want to peek at it. Yeah, it's going to have all this shape information. We can play with this a little bit later. Um, but the one thing I wanted to see, it doesn't have. There's no file coming in, so we'll need to put that on there. But I'm kind of curious. Let's just open this up. Actually, we'll come back to... Oh, where are we? Here we go. Come into shared. Let's just open it and see what we get. If anything at all. Okay, so we do have something here, and we see the basic outline, but it doesn't have the texture. So I think what I'm going to try to do is put the texture in there that it had, and I don't remember what that texture was, so I'm going to go grab it out of here, and we'll see if we can put it in here or at least go to textures and then it's what is a support down on support this here let's see if it'll apply and sure enough it does so that's kind of handy it uh, Oh, I gotta say, you don't really see the outline of it, but then again, you don't really see it in here either. And that reminds me, let's create some lights just so we can see what's going on, All right? I wonder if over here, you know, we do have a lamp. I don't know what kind of a lamp we created. Actually, I want to move this up. <clears throat> Let's create lights. 
yeah now that we have some lights wherever they're showing up we do start to see it so i'm i'm pleased with this i mean good enough now this here on the end i freely acknowledge that looks horrible abysmal but when you're sitting outside of the combine just looking in you won't see the piece sticking up here that was there previously so i'm gonna call it good so let's get rid of our lights and we'll just save this and i wonder if there was any other settings that were on this support you know look at the maybe i'll move this over here they used point actually i'll put this over here i'm just trying to duplicate it as much as i can not 100 percent sure what difference these would make i just when i try to do this stuff because i don't know what i'm doing i try to duplicate it as well as i can from whatever i took it from um but i'm sure a professional or someone who actually knows what they're doing would have a, a much better idea so there i think we've duplicated it i'll minimize the combine here we'll close the texture and i'm going to hit save and now let's let's take a look real quick i want to make sure that this is working as to how it pulls the see now we see the file i want you to notice it says relative path true so it's looking for this dds file appears to be looking for it in the appropriate way so i think we're good um so i'm tickled actually that we're, we've been able to to work with this a little bit yet so i'm going to leave this up for a second in case we need it uh, but otherwise going to come back into the combine now we're going to import what we just did the part that uh, that we worked on got to go find it in the shared folder it's this one right here i'll import it <clears throat> um i think that would be this right here it imported another camera which we we don't need um so let me grab the support i'll cut it and i'm gonna <clears throat> i think it's down where was it right here's this particular one so i I could paste it right into the same model, but I'm not sure that's the best way to do it. So I'm just going to put it in this whole folder and I'm going to migrate it up. So let's move up. We'll get it up to where the other one is. And we're going to have to delete the other one at some point because what we don't want to do is throw off our indexing remember many of these parts or some of them can be uh, indexed by the xml so you know i see like a rotor here that might be something turning somewhere so now we have the index off if we leave you know these parts in here that don't belong so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to delete this one so now we know the indexing is preserved and we have this replacement part. So I'm going to go uh, control B, which means wherever I next press the mouse, it's going to put this. So there it is. It actually appears to be kind of a smaller piece um, than what we had there before. So I think I need to scale this up a little bit. So, whoop, boy, that moved it quite a ways. Um, where it went, there we go. Just to get it closer to the hand over here. 
And I remember the controls on a combine. You know, maybe this is something that even improved with the more modern versions. But first thing we're going to do is we're going to give this some um, extra uh, size. And so here now we have our console. And we have it sitting right by the player's hand. We, oh, there's a piece of it that kind of is coming through the floor, so I'll maybe tilt that a little bit. You know, I almost think, you know what, before I tilt that, maybe I'll pop it back. I almost think I need to turn this around. Is that what I need to do? Only it isn't letting me, there we go. Here we go. Yeah, that part's supposed to be facing back. That looks a little better, doesn't it? So our player is going to have his arm over here. So maybe, maybe I could even try to get it a wee closer. I just don't know exactly where the player arm is going to set. Um, that looks a little hokey, maybe. So I maybe can move it into maybe I'll move that a little forward. Try to guess about where the hand would be. Sure. Well, it for sure isn't perfect no doubt about that um, but we have it in here again and I'm gonna lift this whole transform group and try to put this marry this if you will to the new place where we have put our parts So how does that look? If we're sitting in here and running this machine, this is just off the armrest. I'm hoping we have a fairly reasonable, workable um, something here. So I kind of think think the gear goes off of you know it may I may need to turn this just a fuzz to line this up if you will kind of with how this gear will be moved so let me try this again. Does that look a little bit more normal? Like if I move, if it's going to rotate on this axis here. That's not bad. I know there's a slot in there. We'll never see this from the outside. So I'm thinking that that may, that may be about as good as we can get. So... I believe, you know, we've changed nothing in here. We have kept the, remember, we still have the right hand positioned on the lever itself. So I'm hopeful that when we give this a try in game, we will see at least that the player's hand is now wrapped around this uh, gear shift thing here. And I believe that's about all we need to do to move that. So that's a little bit of hoopla we just did. But I'm hoping that works. So why don't we go in game? I'm going to pull out um, these extra lights here. It'll go dark. Let me hit save. 
and we're going to give this a try in game. So let's do it. Wait for the game to load up as it does. I still don't think that the player's right hand is going to move as freely as the left hand does. That's kind of what I saw on other mods where they chose to keep the right hand stationary. We may end up there too. But for now, I just want to see if we've been able to move the player's hand at all. And so this will be the moment of truth. And if it doesn't, well, at least we have created a new part for it so that it looks a little more normal. And, you know, having it set up the way it is in there. And then we'll just need to figure out how to place the hand there. You know, there's some maybe something off. But if that doesn't work uh, either, um, yeah, we'll just have to keep it after it until we do or give up at some point because it's getting dull. Puppy telling us of we're in game. All right, so we're in here. We see our new part sitting there. It's kind of right beside things. So why don't we Okay, well, that's very interesting. It appears, remember as we've done before, <laughs> he just doesn't quite move. Let me turn it on and just move a little bit. You know, it's almost like, you know, his hand is right through that. It's almost like his right hand has to sit at some predetermined place. It's either that or there's an offset to his hand that is still off in there. You know, we could... Uh, if I pull open, I believe we still have the XML open for the combine. If we go look at the hands again. You know, we have his right arm. We have a target 300002456.1. We go back to our model and we get in there and we come, I believe, to here. Uh, well, that's a support, sorry. But the right hand, 3000024561. So, you know, it's centered right on the object. It's right in the middle of the, that orange shifter or whatever. What says it over here? Target offset. See, there's a number of uh, settings here. I really don't know what makes the difference on those or whether it's placement of the hands, the fingers. You know, we didn't have to touch any of this when it was the left arm. And we have it centered kind of on the the wheel up there. You know, it's kind of just opposite settings is up here. There's still the same offsets aligned to target and so forth. So I really don't know you know what changing the ease may do it appears the settings between the fingers and hands are all similar although this is negative 40 down here in rotation i see this is a positive 20 but everything else really looks the same so for the moment um for the moment, I'm pleased. You know, we got the parts changed. That was worth something, exploring it. And we just need to... And we can get his hand to go. Boy, there's got to be a way to do it if we only knew how to do it. So I may end up moving the tool just a little bit further forward. 
you know, his hand goes back right along with it. So either the tool or the position of the hand, I'll figure out something and and uh, mix that up a little bit. So maybe at the moment I'll just get out of here, take it out of game. We'll go back to our model. And the hand, as you recall, is a little bit further forward. Um, once again, in the XML, I just don't know enough about this. I'd have to do some study as to know, you know, just what index this is referring to. You know, this is obviously has something to do with the right arm. We've seen it on other uh, models or other of the Giants models. It's set up similarly. We know where the target is. We've placed it down. We know that the right arm is activated because we have it activated up here, right arm I key, IK chain, just like the left arm is in there. But you know, there's fine rotation and all this and that. Um, there may be other commands or XML coding we could put in there that would do stuff. But you know, unless the Giants chooses to share that with us we don't really know just what to tweak so i think what we're left with is a little by gosh and by golly um movement in here just to get it set on the handle here so since um i should see here i want to go let's see his hand is like this i gotta figure out which way to move this to get his hand. I think his hand was kind of lined up on the thing. So maybe we'll tilt that a little bit and move it back. I don't know how much to move it back, but maybe that's enough. Seems counterintuitive to put the hand over there, but that's what I'm going to try. We'll save it and we'll go look at it one more time in game and see if we have fixed it or at least got it close enough. It likely still isn't going to be perfect, may still go the route of uh, trying to just fix it on there and, and, and quit having the shifter lever move. But, but I know we're getting close. And it's funny sometimes fixing this. I don't know how other people are when they mod things, but it's like you get a bee in your bonnet. Once you notice something, you, it's like you want to fix it badly. And so you take a few steps, and sometimes, if you're kind of like me, you dog it until you get it fixed, and then you move on to something else, and you don't even care about what you just fixed. But the fun part was figuring out how to do the fix. At least that's kind of what I found. So let me see here. Did we get his hand anywhere closer? Ah, no, we didn't. His hand is, you know, his hand is kind of over to the left now. But is it, oops. It's just so hard to tell. It's back. Interestingly, it almost looks back as far as we told it to be. Is that about back as far as we want it? We just need to get it to go to the right. So, all right. Like I say, I sure wish I knew how the XML works. So that means this is putting his hand too far to the left. So if we want him to move over, to get closer to the shifter, we need to encourage his hand out. Maybe. So if this doesn't work, maybe then what we need to do is physically move the gear shift lever closer to, I think that what that would tell us, we'll save it here and go back in game.
But I think what that would tell us is that there are limitations in the movement of the arm itself, which seems strange. Like I say, I know I put it up there on the steering wheel at one point, and when that old wheel turned, the right arm moved just as flexibly as the left arm. So it's a little surprising that we're having difficulty moving it um, over here, but it's just because I don't know what I'm doing. But this is all part of the part of the journey. So I'll take it back in one more time, and I'd be curious in the comments, you know, if there are other people who do a little modding, if they dabble a little bit, just what kinds of things do you do modding, and what do you fix, or what annoys you, then you have to have it fixed when you go in game, or or that kind of thing. I know it's always something for, for all of us. Zoom back in. Oh, well, I can't tell if he really budged his. That almost looks like he drew it back further. Now, look at that. How. Did, wasn't his arm closer to himself, you know, when we first started? I almost think it was. So, you know we have him close. I almost think we need to move his hand just a wee bit forward. Because it appears he is able to stick his hand out. Now we just need to, it, it's close. No cigars. I say, see, we can move it back to his hand there. Yeah, it's just his hand isn't moving as much as the gear shifter lever is. And we could, I suppose, I may do some other tinkering. I don't need to keep showing all this on the video. There are some settings, I think, for this lever right here that I'm flicking there to where you can increase or reduce the amount of rotation. So we may try that. So I'm going to position the hand just a little bit further forward and I think we'll call that good so let's take it back up this way a little bit kind of weird how we have to place that I'm going to say save and we'll go to the XML here oh, I think it was a joystick let me just do a simple search joystick oops joystick So, so yeah, rotation front, rotation back, 15 and negative 10. That probably means there's a 25 degree bit of movement in there. So I suppose we could leave a little bit of movement in there. For the moment, I'm just going to leave that alone, but I have a feeling that's what, uh, what we would need to fix in there. So, well, I'm pleased. I think we have pretty well a fix for this it isn't quite what we wanted but I think it's close at least so now being in cab the handle the the gear here will be a little closer to the hand and when we see it outside it'll seem a little more natural because a player's hand will be close to if not touching it it'll just one more of those little things to help suspend reality a little bit more. Thanks for watching. I'll cut the video off here. I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care for now.